In this video, we're gonna go over how to create sequences, AKA multicam or multi-angle clips inside Descript. So before we jump into it, why would you wanna make a sequence? Why would you want to make a multicam clip? Main reason is going to be recorded an event, something where you have multiple angles of the same thing or multiple video files of the same thing that you need to synchronize together. It is most likely going to be a podcast recording, especially if you used a podcast recording program that records every single video file separately, like Riverside or like Squadcast, which is built inside Descript now since they acquired it. So you sync up your angles into a sequence and then you edit the sequence and that gives you a lot more flexibility when you're editing to switch between different camera angles or the active speaker or to create multiple layouts where you have split screen. It makes it a lot easier to do that using templates inside Descript, but to do that first, you've got to set up your sequence. So let's jump into that. All right, so we are in Descript, a podcast that we're already working on. But let me go over to the clips. And so we've got our video clips here. And so I've already imported these, but these are clips. This was a podcast, it was two people, and it was recorded inside Riverside. Riverside has a built-in feature where it can export the project to Descript, but let's say someone sent you a download link or uh, you just didn't use that feature or use another recording program. But with Riverside and I believe some of the other apps, there's an option where you say, okay, I want to export a uh, constant frame rate. So CFR, you can see that in the file name here. And that basically equalizes the two video clips so that each person's camera is the exact same length. And we can see here that they're both exactly 51 minutes and 47 seconds. So that when we do what we are about to do, syncing them together is going to be pretty easy. But don't worry, just in case your clips are not perfectly synchronized, we will go over how to synchronize them yourself. So first part though, let me just go over building the actual sequence part. So I selected both of these clips. I just held down command or you do control if you're on a PC while selecting both. And then we can see now that I've got two clips selected here, I've got the option to create sequence. And so that's what we're gonna do. So we have this new window that pops up and I'm just going to change this into, this is the, the sequence name and I'm gonna make this something that is a bit more easy to understand. And you can see that it already made these two tracks for, I'm gonna try to make this window smaller. Okay, so we can see we've got our two tracks here and these are our two video tracks. I'm just hitting control or command minus to zoom out. And both of these separate video tracks were already transcribed. So what you wanna do is just run those two different tracks or whatever angles you have through transcription. But you'd also do that after the fact if you don't do this beforehand. And we can see our text and we can see our audio files. And then here we can see the different names of the files. But if you wanna make this a bit more just easier to read, you can change these to you know just the person's name so it's easier to deal with. All right, so we can scrub back and forth. We can see our clips and whichever clip is uh, selected, we can preview the video. So we're selected on the Freddy clip right now, but if we click the bottom one, Leo, we can see Leo, but he's not talking. So it's not much of a just reaction. I do wish that there was a way where you could see like a two preview window or four preview window of your video. So you can kind of verify that they are in fact synced up. But uh, yeah, it's just not a feature right now in Descript. And then for the features that we've got here, if you need to add other angles or video files that you forgot, you can just add the media right here. You don't have to click back out and redo it. So we'll just add it as a new layer. Depending on which, you can check the name up here to see which one you have selected. You can do just individual edits to that track because basically we're gonna kind of make this sequence into a like quote, like a little bigger file that we're gonna edit with inside Descript uh, and changes would sort of apply universally to that clip. So if we need to make individual edits to like someone's microphone or someone's specific audio, we would want to do that inside here. So we could adjust the audio, we can solo or mute them. We could do any trims if we needed to, but we want these to be in sync, so we won't do that here. If we wanted to make someone's mic louder than the other person's, we could do that here, adjust the audio levels. And then by default, I believe it turns on studio sound, which just helps mix the sound. So it just improves the sound quality. And you can uh, either turn that on or off if you want. And you can also adjust the intensity if just, you know, you want some studio sound, but not as much as it's supplying in the cleanup. And then we also have some tools here, similar to what we have in the timeline view. If you need to make any edits or adjustments, we won't go over really what these do here, but these would just be very specific. Like if you need to cut or split up a clip for whatever reason, or just make adjustments on each layer. And then also if you want to change the order of who's on top or which one shows up and maybe there's a speaker who doesn't speak that much, so you don't need them to show up in the layer order. Also, the layer order will come into play when you use templates. We're not gonna cover templates in this video, but that is just something to keep in mind that 
the angle number comes into play when you use templates. So if you need to adjust the number of, or what layer each person's on, you can just drag and drop. That's how you do it. I'm going to put Freddie back on as number one because he's the main speaker. And so just to zoom out a bit too, you can see a better preview of how all these clips come together. So we got this hour long, roughly interview and, you know, do some spot checks. Edeon for now. Um, my argument would be we could do that so much better. And so, yeah, so you would want to verify that everything sounds good and is in sync, but because this already kind of get, came to us as the two clips are perfectly aligned, this one's an easy one. We're going to go over hard one in a second. So we'll say done, and then we'll see, we already have this existing because we have an imported sequence, but if you click this drop down, you get this new little folder here that says sequences, and now we have our new sequence. And so this sequence is the clip, sort of the quote video file that you'll edit with. And so if you just say make a new composition from that, we've got our sequence as a video file. And the cool thing is because we had two separate files, which each had their own transcript and, you know, this Freddie one just transcribing whatever Freddie, the person says, and this Leo one just transcribing whatever Leo is saying. But when we look at it in the composition, we have one complete transcript of everyone's lines merged together. So it makes it super easy to just read through and edit the podcast and everyone's transcripts are accurate and brought together or accurate in the sense that time-wise they're accurate. This has not been proofread, so you'd still want to do that. And we've got a whole other video about proofreading transcripts and stuff. So check that out. And so we've got our layers here, but if you checked out our layer video, we go over how this works. But now because we have a sequence, each angle, each person's camera angle is considered a layer. And by default, it just gives us this handy layout where we are able to uh, see both camera angles at once, but each layer is individual and we can edit it. So if we wanted to make one bigger or one smaller, we can do that. We're not going to go too deep into it, but if you want to mess around with it, if you click up here, you get this, you go to gallery, you get the template view and the template options. And so this is where you can scope out a bit and check out different layouts like this one. And so this is where you can instantly pull up and create templates of different layouts for your podcast. And as you want to switch angles or whatever, based on who's speaking or who you want to feature, I'm just going to add some scenes in here to mark these sections. And so let's say I want to change this layout here. And so you can see I've got one layout here, and then when we switch scenes, we go to a different layout. These are obviously not the greatest layouts we would want for this. We're going to do a whole other video, or it might be out already by the time we're watching this, about using templates and stuff. So be sure to check that out. But if you just want to mess around or as a little preview of what you can do, just head up here and check out these different template layouts. And that's where the power of doing these sequences comes into play to really change these camera angles. And you could also come up here to scene and choose template as a quicker way to just pop into the template. And then also, if you just have one person speaking or you just want to show one person, you can just hide one of the video layers to just have your one person angle show up and switch back and forth. All right, so that was a nice and neat example where the clips are perfectly aligned, but in the real world, everything is not nice and perfect. So what happens if we have two clips where the video clips are not the same exact length? We can't just snap them in and they are automatically synchronized, which is normally what will be the case. So in this example, I have what's an example where I'm just doing a presentation and I wanted to record a, my screen where I'm giving the presentation with the slides. And then I have a separate video that I recorded on my phone of me giving the presentation and I want to edit that together in Descript. I'm not gonna edit the video in here, but I'm gonna give you this example because we would want to synchronize these so that when I'm speaking, it is in sync with my slides. So that when I edit it, everything's in sync and it goes a lot smoother. So again, I'm going to select both of these clips and then I'm going to say create sequence. And now these I have not transcribed. So you'll see that there's no text here because I haven't transcribed anything and it's telling me to transcribe, but I'm not gonna do that for this. And so, you know, we just want to make things obvious and give some clear names. And now this isn't the greatest example since you can't see me speaking in the slides, but we can hear. And now I'm going to do my fake presentation about everything you want to know about. 
So if I zoom out, and just for reference, the clip of my iPhone of me is a lot longer because I hit record and then I hopped back around in front of the computer and sat down and then started recording on the computer. Computer clip's only 24 seconds for this mock presentation demo, whereas my iPhone clip is a minute, a little over a minute. And it starts them with them both synced, but if we zoom out, we can see that the demo is obviously definitely very not synced presentation about everything you want to know about WordPress. Okay, so if you're familiar with any other video app, Final Cut, Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, pretty much standard fare now is for any video app to, as long as your video clips have reference audio, which the screen recording video was recording my computer, my microphone that I'm speaking into right now. So this has audio. And then my iPhone was just recording the audio from the iPhone camera or the iPhone microphone. So it's not great audio, but there's reference audio. And so any other video editing app that's out there, if you have multiple video files with the same audio, it can automatically sync that up. Descript does not have that feature, unfortunately. So what I had to do when I was recording is a bit of an old school trick before the days of automatic audio syncing, which was you just clap on camera. And so by clapping, we can look at this waveform and we see this big spike. And we also have a visual reference of me clapping. The visual reference isn't always the greatest, but the audio spike is what we need. So we can see I've got that audio spike here, which is way into the video. And then you can see I got this big spike here, which is when I clapped on the presentation. So I'm just going to click and drag this clip down and line it up by eye. And so I'm just gonna zoom in a lot more now. And so we can see it's still not perfectly aligned yet. And I'm just gonna put that there. And that's pretty good. I mean, in this case, because things can get tricky when you have like multiple people speaking or different angles speaking on camera, because we're looking at the human perception of hearing something and seeing someone speak. And there's a very minimal, very fine range of what's acceptable before our brain starts being like, hey, something's up this audio is not lining up. Uh, but because this is a slide deck presentation, we got a little bit more latitude with what we can get away with. But this looks pretty lined up and then we can just play and listen to the audio. And now I'm gonna do my fake presentation about everything you wanna know about WordPress. Here's the thing with a slide. And that sounds pretty lined up. Here, let's, here's an example if this was like slightly like a frame or two out of sync and you would hear that audio drift. Here's the thing with a slide. Here's another thing with slide. So you hear that, that's an echo. That's when your audio is pretty close, but it's not exactly lined up. And then if I undo this, you can hear what lined up sounds like. Here's the thing with a slide. Here's another thing with slide. And so yeah, that's pretty good. And then also because this slide audio, this slide audio here is the good audio. It's recorded with a good microphone. And this one was just recorded with my iPhone camera, microphone, which I don't want. So I would just click this and then I would click here to mute it because I don't actually want to hear that audio at all. I just want to use the audio from the microphone, which is actually why this is important to, so take back what I said earlier. It is important for this to perfectly line up because I'm using the audio from this file, but I'm speaking in this file. And so we need to make sure that there's no weirdness where you're like, hmm, his audio sounds weird. No about WordPress. Here's the thing with a slide. And this is gonna be a terrible example because my computer is overheating right now and not playing back smoothly. Here's the thing with a slide. All right, just take my word for it that it's lined up because we can see that the audio waveforms are synchronized here. All right, and that is it. That is how you sync up your clips and create a sequence with multiple camera angles. Now, the power of this is then once you start editing this, you can apply templates. We're not gonna go into templates in this video. We're gonna do that in a future video, or if it's already published, just check out the link. We'll have a pop up here in the card or check it out on the link below. And also if you are doing a lot of video podcasting stuff, we've got a full course on both video podcasting with Riverside and also how to use Descript, a complete editing course on Descript. So check that out in the link below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you want more stuff and more tutorials and interesting videos like this, then hit the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video.